We did the calculus case for 1D. It extends naturally to 3D. In 3D, we don't just have x, y, or z. We have all three. So how we define our position is usually with this position vector denoted by r as a vector. Essentially, what r represents is the displacement from the origin to that point. But effectively, what it's showing, especially when it's broken down into i, j, k components, is to show you the corresponding x, y, z coordinates of your position. So in 3D, then, the instantaneous velocity is defined as the derivative of this positional vector. But what the heck does it mean to take the derivative of a vector? But thankfully, with the ijk unit vector notation, we can sidestep that, and you can wait until second year to really get into what does it mean to derive a vector. Let's look at each term separately. Eh? The first term here, you have some function of time, which represents the x coordinate, right? So this is x of t, kind of like the 1d case, multiplied by i hat, right? The i hat is responsible for explaining the direction that you're in. When you derive a product, if you know from calculus, you use the product rule, right? So you take the derivative of one, multiply by the other, plus that thing times the derivative of the other one. Now, dx dt, we know how to do. It's just like the 1d case. di dt, right? We have to consider this unit vector and what it is, right? A vector is defined by both this direction and magnitude, right? Those two things are everything that the vector stands for. Now, the i hat vector, its direction is constant in the pos of x. That's always going to be defined that way. And the magnitude, being a unit vector, is always constant at 1. If both the direction does not change and the magnitude does not change, the vector is overall constant and it doesn't change in time, therefore the, its derivative is 0. So then effectively, when you take the derivative of a positional vector that has been broken down in i, j, k component form, you end up just deriving each of the components and the i, j, k just comes along for the ride. The units, of course, goes from meters to meters per second, like it always has because we're dividing by dt. But that's a key advantage of breaking things down using i, j, k, x, y, z, corner system that stays fixed in time. So let's do these derivative, right? These are just power rules again. The minus sign stays. And the negative power, the entire thing comes down to give us the answer for part A, which is the velocity as a function of time. Now for part B, it's actually very similar, right? Because what velocity is to position acceleration is the velocity. So the acceleration is dv dt. And again, the ijk doesn't affect my derivative. So skipping a few steps, because you've done power laws enough. And the unit becomes meters per second square, of course. So that's the key idea I want to get across with these calculus stuff. You know, even in 3D, we can still do derivatives just as easily. The rest of the question kind of goes through and make sure you know what it means to have a velocity and speed, etc. So let's just do that real quick. Part C, what is the particle's velocity at a particular time? So we take our velocity function, as we have from previous, and we just sub in 2 for t. And again, we can't mix the i, j, and k because they're multiplied by different letters. But we punch each of them in the calculator, and this is what we get. And this is, of course, a perfectly good way to uniquely specify your vector, right? Using some i, some j, some k, so that there's no need to do anything else specifically. In fact, it's probably more difficult to try and come up with a mag magnitude and direction kind of um, notation, because the direction in 3D is really not trivial to specify. As long as we have a unique i, j, and k, x, y, z component that uniquely identifies the vector. However, in part D, they come and ask us about the speed. 
right? And when we talk about the speed, again, that's the magnitude of my velocity. And so we have to deal with magnitude in 3D. Think of it this way. If you have some X component, some Y component, these are mutually perpendicular, and then out of that plane rises some Z component, gives you the overall vector here. You can think of this as having I, J, and K direction. Then the length of this part here by Pythagoras would be the square root of X squared plus Y squared. And so with this other right angle triangle with the Z, then you would have this thing square, so just X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared or square root. And so you can see that the magnitude, even in 3D, follows pretty much the same form as Pythagoras. But of course, before we can actually do that, we need to find out the size of each of these components first. So again, let's write out my velocity function as a function of time. And then we sub in one second. That's pretty easy. So it's really all the t terms goes away because they're all ones. So then the magnitude here would be each of these things square summed up. Technically, the negative sign doesn't really matter because you're squaring it. And then we square root the whole thing. If you square meters per second and then square root it, you get meters per second again, which is roughly 24 meters per second. Similarly, we do the same thing, but for three seconds. Of course, using the calculator to work out each component, finding the magnitude then. would give you 190. That middle number really just dominates because it's so much bigger than the other ones. And then finally, part E, we were looking at, again, average velocity. So we don't look at the derivative at all. We're talking about delta R over delta T, the change in position over change in time. In this case, we're comparing two seconds and one second, and we sub it R in in meters. The one second case is a little easier. So essentially it becomes an exercise in vector subtraction. The main takeaway of course is you have to collect like terms, right? You gotta collect, go through the i's and then the j's and the k's separately and then just be extra careful with the negative sign there. Right, because we got rid of this bracket here, this negative sign carries through and changes these two things to the positive. And then we're dividing by one second, so I'm just going to put that at the end. So collect like terms, i's with the i's, j's with the j's, k's with the k's. And that's your average velocity between these two times. So given the i, j, k, 1d, 3d, 2d, it's all pretty simple.